Hey there, New Life Church. Um, my name is Justin Bates. I'm one of the West Little Rock youth leaders, and I'm here today to give just a small little daily devo. Um, luckily enough, I've been a part of the New Life Church family for all 21 years of my life. My dad, Harry Bates, has actually been a pastor here for a long time, you know. He's getting up there, so I kind of forget about the exact years of how long he's been here, but we've actually loved every minute of it, and I just love to keep him humble a little bit. Um, speaking of being humble, uh, that's kind of the topic of today's message that I'm going to be going down, um, just being a humble Christian and being humble in this life. Um, when I was thinking about being humble, you know, not only is God the number one humbler in our lives, I think, if you think about the close second, is elementary school kids. Um, I actually know this for a fact as not only am I a youth leader, I also work full-time at Little Rock Christian Academy in the elementary side where I'm a permanent recess monitor. I'm the, I'm the fun coach, fun teacher out there, I'm just running around playing kickball and all these games. But boy, have I learned that you can get humbled very quickly by these little kids because not only do they have no filter, but they are brutally honest, you know. It's those days where I'm coming into work with, you know, just a little bit of bad head or maybe just... Uh, new new shoes, new shirt that I'm thinking, oh, I'm doing all right. Um, I don't need to use this mirror today. I don't need to do anything new. I'm going to be fine is when the first recess comes out and after about 15 kids telling me that my hair looks funny or that my new shoes are ugly, that um, you know, I'm going back to the car and I'm grabbing a pair of shoes or I'm grabbing a hat to put on. You know, with all jokes aside of being roasted by little elementary school kids every day of my life, you know, I think when we correlate all of this to our spiritual lifestyle, you know, it's the days where I'm not using God as my mirror in my life. I'm not checking myself and seeing how humble and how um, good I am at asking him questions and following what he's giving me that I'm getting burned in life. I mean, I have a lot of tough battles come up. I mean, everything's not going my way. I'm getting a lot of discomfort in my soul. Um, and that comes from not him doing me wrong but from me following my own thoughts and my own um, wants and not what he wants to give us. You know, he doesn't want to give us discomfort, but we bring that upon ourselves, right? You know, I see one person in the Bible that does this over and over again, and I feel like he gets the butt of the joke all the time, and that's Simon Peter, one of the um, 12 disciples. You know, uh, one of the uh, stories I want to look into Actually, it's in Luke 22, um, starting at verse 31, and we're going to read 31 and 34. Simon, Simon, Satan has asked to sift all of you as wheat. But I have prayed for you, Simon, that your faith may not fail. And when you have turned back, strengthen your brothers. But he replied, Lord, I'm ready to go with you to prison and to death. Jesus answered, I tell you, Peter, before the rooster crows today, you will deny me three times that you know me. Generally speaking, when Jesus is talking to you or when you're asked God for something and God tells you something, they aren't lying to you. Fun fact, they can't lie. They don't sin. They're going to tell you exactly what you need to do. It may not be what you think is right, but that's on you and that's your thoughts, not their thoughts. And that's when we usually put ourselves in most harm's way and feel the most pain, right? Uh, keeping going in this um, chapter, Luke 22, um, 54 through 62. Um, this is right when Jesus has just been seized by the guards. Um, then seizing him, they led him away and took him into the house of the high priest. Peter followed at a distance. And when some there had kindled a fire in the middle of the courtyard and had sat down together, Peter sat down with them. A servant girl saw him seated there in the firelight. She looked closely at him and said, This man was with him. But he denied it. Woman, I don't know him, he said. A little later, someone else saw him and said, You are also one of them. Man, I am not, Peter replied. About an hour later, another asserted, Certainly this fellow was with him, for he is a Galilean. Peter replied, Man, I don't know what you're talking about. Just as he was speaking, the rooster crowed. The Lord turned and looked straight at Peter. Then Peter remembered the word the Lord had spoken to him. 
before the rooster crows today, you will disown me three times. And he went outside and wept bitterly. Did Jesus cause him all this pain? No. Peter caused himself this pain because he wasn't humble in the Lord. He thought he was above what the Lord was telling him, what Jesus was telling him to do. I think in the very first part when I was talking about, Jesus told him he knew what he was going to do, and he had already forgiven him in that instant. So all the pain and the embarrassment and the weeping bitterly that Peter is feeling is all brought by himself. He did that to himself because he thought that he was higher than what the Lord is in his life, right? Luckily, we have a very gracious Lord who loves to forgive us, and he's very good at forgiving us. And so if we read later on John 21, verse 15 through 19, um, starting here, this is when Jesus actually reinstates Peter. When they had finished eating, Jesus said to Simon Peter, Simon, son of John, do you love me more than these? Yes, Lord, he said, you know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my lambs. Again, Jesus said, Simon, son of John, do you love me? He answered, yes, Lord, you know that I love you. Jesus said, take care of my sheep. The third time he said to him, Simon, son of John, do you love me? Peter was hurt because Jesus asked him the third time, do you love me? He said, Lord, you know all things. You know that I love you. Jesus said, feed my sheep. Very truly, I tell you, when you were younger, you dressed yourself and went where you wanted. But when you are old, you will stretch out your hands and someone else will dress you and lead you where you do not want to go. Is this talking about physical age? I don't think so. Maybe in some aspect, you know, when we're older, we're going to need a little help getting dressed. But I think in this story, it's actually talking about our spiritual uh, maturity. You know, I feel like whenever we're young and we are first um, learning the Christian lifestyle, when we first become Christians, that we are very reliant on ourselves and not on God, actually. We do what we want, saying we're following God. We're doing what we want, what we think is right. But in reality, when we're older and mature and actually follow the Lord, we actually stretch out our hands and say, Lord, please help me. And that's where we get our spiritual um, strength. And when I'm talking about spiritual strength, I'm talking about that being humble and learning from the Lord and learning exactly what he wants us to do, right? Whenever we put God truly first um, and asking everything, everything from him and doing exactly what he wants us to do, that's where we become really strong and really fulfill our lives in God. Um, you know, it actually says after this that Peter's been reinstated in the last section I read, right? Later in life, Peter's captured and they want to crucify him for spreading the name of Jesus. And he says that he can't be crucified and that he would please and beg them to crucify him upside down, strictly out of respect and honor for his Lord. He didn't feel like he was worthy to die the same way Jesus died. And that just shows just how humble you can become in your life, right? From a guy who was doing what he wanted and um, trying to counteract what the Lord was saying to him, to begging not to die the same way our Lord has. And that's just true, truly being humble in the Lord. And that's what we all should strive for. And I'm here today to say, maybe you are doing what you want. Maybe you are doing too much of your thoughts and your mindset, and maybe you're not asking God um, what he wants you to do in your life. Maybe you are asking God to do what your life and you don't like it and you do what you're own mind says and maybe you're in a lot of pain from this and this is very common we all need to work better on this i know i need to work better on this man i'm not any way shape or form perfect and i struggle with this on a daily basis but we're getting better and i want to pray over us today so we can all get better let's pray dearly father thank for this day um thank you for letting us be here and talk about your name and share um, a word just strictly talking about you and the betterment of ourselves, Lord. Lord, we are sorry for um, doing what our minds want and not doing what you have called us to do and doing the things that can fulfill our story in you, Lord. Um, 
we are leaving that at your cross today, Lord. And we are here to do exactly what you want us to do, Lord. And it's your name we pray. Amen. Thank you guys for tuning in. See ya.